SketchUp tools and operations can typically be accessed either through the menu options, through shortcuts, through the toolbar, or through floating palettes. At the end of the day, it's really personal preference. Set up SketchUp however you are comfortable with. But if you are learning SketchUp for the first time on the Mac and would like to set up your workspace as closely as possible to mine, I will show you how to do that right now. When you first start SketchUp, you will probably see this welcome dialog. And here's where you can see if you are running the free version of SketchUp or SketchUp Pro. If it's the very first time, it will probably prompt you to enter a license as well as select a template. Now, I typically use this construction documentation feet and inches, but I'm going to select simple template just because I want to show you how to change that from the preferences after SketchUp is running. Now, your workspace will probably not look exactly like mine, but what I'd like you to do is close everything that is floating and remove the tools from the toolbar. You can do that by right clicking and select customize toolbar. Now I'm not sure if there's an easier way to do this, but I believe you need to drag and release each one of these into a puff of smoke. And these are the tools I typically have open in my training. I've got the undo redo, the standard views, the styles, the shadows, as well as the shadow slider for adjusting date and time. I also like the git models, which takes you to the 3D warehouse, as well as the extension warehouse, which takes you to the extension warehouse where you can add all kinds of functionality to SketchUp. For the toolbars, I typically only have the large tool set open, which is this guy right here. And these are a lot of the tools that we just removed from the toolbar a couple of minutes ago. If it's the first time you've used SketchUp, or if you're still a beginner, I recommend having the instructor window open. This changes depending on the tool that is selected, and it has all kinds of useful information, as well as the modifier keys, even advanced operation links. I'll go ahead and close that, but I want you to be aware that it exists. Next, I'll go to the Preferences dialog. And the very first option is where you can specify your image editing application. Most likely it will be Photoshop. You can click choose and navigate to where that is on your computer. Also, there's a template option. Here's where we can change the drawing template. You're always working in a 3D environment. Just what you see when you first start is different depending on the template you have selected. In this simple template, you can very clearly see we are in a 3D environment. The construction documentation looks 2D, but it's just because we're looking straight down onto the blue axes. So I will select that, close this, and if I start a new SketchUp document, I am now in this plan view. I want to go back to preferences because the shortcuts are definitely worth mentioning. Here is any and every tool that's available in SketchUp. And there are a handful that I use so often that I'd recommend you set shortcuts as well. One is paste in place. I have P selected. You can choose whatever is most convenient for you. The other one is perspective. Camera slash perspective. That shortcut will be a toggle allowing you to jump between perspective and parallel projection. I use that quite often as well. And I have Z, you can select whichever shortcut you would like. The last one I'd recommend is view hidden geometry. And I have mine select to shift H. I have a lot more shortcuts set, but those 
I use the most often in my training. So if you'd like to follow along as closely as possible, I'd recommend selecting those as well. Now I can close my preferences. Your interface hopefully looks like mine. And again, it's all personal preference, whatever you are more comfortable with. If it's set up like this, this is typically how I like to use SketchUp.